Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of season 3 of the Rule 34 podcast. I'm your host Jack, joined by my fellow co-host. Rene Castillo. And Tio. Alright, so how have you all been? Uh, I have been pretty good. Uh, it's, uh, it's been pretty slow. Uh, I'll be honest, n- nothing much has been going on as of lately. I have work today, I have work tomorrow. Um, yeah. No, nothing much. I mean, have you guys been? I mean, that's just to be expected. Because how do you follow up the crazy story from Thursday? It's true. Yeah. After that, um, I just been laying low for a while. I haven't had any work uh, after this. I mean, after that, after what happened. So I've had it pretty slow at the moment. How about you, Joe? How have you been? Um, I've been good. I've been working a lot on my editing. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> um, I've been working a lot of my editing and just trying to hone my skills, trying new things, trying old things. Mm. It's been good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, for those who don't know that what that noise was, um, Dom left our voice channel that we talked through, and it's because uh, his cat stepped on the keyboard. I don't know how she does it, but every time she steps on it, she manages to, like, screw up. I, I don't know. Somehow she always finds to, like, delete every, like, the, the current page that's up, so she manages to somehow delete Discord, and I, I don't know how she does it, but she does it. Oh, man. Um, let's see, what have I been up to? Nothing much, really. I've just been, you know, doing my normal stuff, as always, catching up on stuff. Um, doing a lot of script writing and uh, today's topic I guess we'll just get straight into it because it is a a very interesting topic to get straight into so we're back with our little mini series of uh, explaining wrestling and this time it uh it expands even more because I got a second non-wrestling fan in Geo to explain it to along with Dom and uh you know, Dom's been getting more and more into it as of late. As uh, anytime there's a pay-per-view, he shows up to watch it, you know. Um, Dom, you showed up for SummerSlam, and I think we talked about that, that a bit. You know, your experience of watching it, the craziness that occurred on that pay-per-view that you got to watch firsthand. Yeah. And uh, it's funny enough that, uh, you know, I bring up that, that you watch SummerSlam. Because today's event storyline happens at SummerSlam, but this is back in the year 2005. And so, to real quickly give context, because I already showed them, like, the video ahead of time before we started recording. So, to give the context, um, earlier that year, in 2005, Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio um, won the tag team titles with each other. And uh, so they were tag team champions together, but then they kind of started showing cracks in their tag team, you know, like as if they were going to like turn on each other. Right. And so um, to kind of like, uh, how would you say, like strengthen their bond, the two of them have a match at WrestleMania that year, like as a as a friendly competition between the two and they were still tag team champions at this point so you know they just decided to have a match against one another and so they have that match you know it's supposed to be like a little like friendly bout between the two of them but uh ray ends up getting the victory over eddie you know and uh as a i think uh how would you say it basically this was his third loss to ray and you guys know that through the video i showed you where yeah, you know, Rey Mysterio brings up that Eddie Guerrero can never beat him, you know? And, um, you know, the cracks get even deeper between the two as a team as they're put into a match to see who can challenge uh, for the, the main world title. But the two of them kind of interfere in each other's matches, and uh, it causes DQ finishes. They both got disqualified, meaning they didn't move on to try and challenge. And then they would go on to face this new tag team that would form but uh, they end up losing their tag titles to that new team in the match. And, uh, you know, basically this is where the feud really begins between the two of them, you know. 
And it, it's funny because this all starts essentially as like a, like Eddie's cousin, who's also a wrestler on the roster, you know, was kind of like putting like a, how would you say, like being the kind of like manipulative in a way and like telling him that, uh, you know, Ray didn't have his best interest. So like the two of them break up and, um, you know, that's when Eddie, you know, turns heel, turns into the bad guy for the feud, you know, and really kind of, uh, starts blaming Ray for a lot of their losses and, you know, blames him for holding him down. And that's how like the feud starts until, um, Eddie finally brings up that, uh, he has a secret that he wants to tell. And that's when you saw in the, in the promo package, I showed you guys that they have a match at, uh, I think it's the great American bash to kind of, uh, to see whether, like, you know, if Eddie wins, he can tell that secret. If not, then he has to keep it shut. But because he's the bad guy, even though he loses that match, he still makes the secret known to the world. And that is, um, that, you know, Eddie, Eddie shows up and tells them that Ray isn't Dominic's father. Dominic is Ray Mysterio's son that was showing up on TV at the time, you know? And yeah. so he, he makes that announcement and, like, the, the, uh, the kayfabe or like the storyline um explanation is that uh ray and his wife i guess you know were struggling to have a child and um eddie i think eddie's explanation was that like he had like a fling with a woman and uh she gets pregnant but neither of them wanted it but he knows that his friend ray wants it, has been struggling to have a kid so he gives him the child that that's the whole explanation of the of um dominic mysterio and so at this point in the storyline it's kind of confirmed that eddie is his biological father and raise his adoptive father right right and so they have that whole thing and then now eddie wants custody of the child as a way to get back at ray but you know ray's like oh you know i'm his real father he treats me like his real father while you gave him up to me and stuff like that but, you know, as you saw, Eddie's talking about how he has the the actual documents for custody and all that. But then Ray brings back the whole thing of he's never beaten him. And so he uses this to entice him into a match. And the match is, at SummerSlam, Ray Mysterio versus Eddie Guerrero in a ladder match for the custody of a child. And I, as uh, as I was showing them, you know, they, they the two of them were just kind of laughing because the, the promo package for this match is very dramatic. And I the part that really gets me is when you hear Michael Cole, the commentator, go, for the first time ever, we're deciding the custody of a child in a ladder match. His The faith of this child is hanging in a briefcase above the ring. And so I just want to real quickly ask the two of you, what were your thoughts on the video alone and just the, how would you put it, like, the comedy of this storyline? The fact that, you know, it's a, it's such a serious, like, real-life kind of a ordeal, and yet in wrestling, it's being decided in a ladder match. I think it it, it takes it a bit out of proportion. Oh, my, my bad, I just want, want to say this, but um, I feel like too many people... Regardless of the fact that it is a serious topic, it kind of goes over their heads that to other people, this is serious. And, like, they, they might be even fighting, like, legal cases in which they're trying to fight for the custody of a child. But, you know, it's gone to the point where now, in terms of wrestling, now they have to actually fight for the child, which is... I'm not sure if it's legally allowed, technically. <laughs> but... I just think it's funny that now we resorted to, like, I mean, because I'm assuming regardless of the fact that it's WWE, people could still, I guess, not have to fight. But now we actually have to see them fight for the custody of a child. And it's it's funny. I like it. It's funny. I actually prefer it this way because, as you were saying, a lot of people actually have to deal with months, maybe even years of going back and forth with lawyers, court dates, to settle an issue like this, but this is just, like, so simple. Just whoever <laughs> wins gets the child. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just so... Like, it, it's funny to me that this is the way they decided, and, like, you know, 
it, the funniest thing to me is always that like you got to think about like a uh, you know, like I said, like the real life comparison and stuff. But so you think of it in this comparison, the thing that makes it so funny to me is that basically a, a an actual judge, like if you're thinking in the storyline sense, a judge approved this match to go ahead to 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 handle the custody of this child. Like he heard them say, we want to fight for the custody of this child in a ladder match. He was like, yeah, that sounds logical. Go ahead and do it. Oh, man. But so... um the the one question I always ask Dom that I will propose to the two of you now too is uh as an outsider, if you had been watching this like as it was happening, what would have your thoughts been? Like just watching this happen on your television screen. Either and you can you can either think of that in the sense of like whatever your age was at the time, so like you were just a kid watching this, or even just like right now, like if you were an adult in those times watching that, what would your thoughts have been? I think when I was smaller, when I was smaller, I used to watch like the WWE, but it was, I was, I don't remember ever seeing anything like this. It was like, what the one storyline that I do remember is, it was John Cena and that one group, Nexus or oh, whatever uh-huh. you call it. Yeah, that, that's the one thing I remember, but I don't like recall anything as ridiculous as this. It, like it was usually just people have beef and they keep fighting with each other, and you know. But I, I don't think I would have understood what was going on if I watched this as, as a little kid. Because <laughs> I mean, what kid turns on their television to watch WWE and starts thinking about you know the like the social ramifications of this? <laughs> no one's gonna do that. It's just like. If anything, you you want to be the kid they're fighting over. <laughs> um, uh, what about what about you, Don? What what would, what would you have been thinking? I would have thought, um, see, if I were to be seeing it first time without any context, I would be thinking it, it'd be absolutely stupid. Like I would probably be thinking, why don't they just sell, settle it out legally? Like, well, like, but, you know, then I'd be thinking, okay, but if it's through a fight, it'd be taking less than, I guess, an hour compared to a whole month's years, as Gio has stated, in terms of a legal fight. But then again, I would be thinking, wouldn't it be kind of unfair to see, like, if, like, let's say one was absolutely, like, stronger and would dominate the other, uh, the opposing side. And so... I was thinking, what? Well, how would there be, uh, I guess, an equal, uh, I guess, um, how would you say it? To make everything equal, so it's a fair fight for both. Because if one's absolutely dominating in terms of strength, they're going to take that child, whether or not the child likes that person or not. So it's like a big conflicting if one's more stronger than the other. I think it would have been even more hilarious. Is what it's, it's who's the other guy? It's Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. Imagine instead of Eddie Guerrero, it was like someone like the Big Show, <laughs> or what was the other guy's name? Henry something? Oh, Mark Henry. Yeah, Mark Henry. Dude, that would have been hilarious. Yeah, but Eddie... I think. Oh, go ahead. It was. I was gonna. What was I gonna say? Um, say your thought and then hopefully I remember what I was going to say uh, I was going to say like to kind of give like an, uh, a head cannon to Dom about the whole disadvantage thing because you know Rey Mysterio is very much shorter uh, maybe a bit similar in weight to Eddie Guerrero I can't confirm that for sure but uh, you know I think the like head cannon that you can give yourself is that that was the whole point of adding a stipulation to the match and especially like um also the the other like uh I guess you could say like head cannon explanation for why there's a stipulation is because all the matches they've previously fought in were just like regular wrestling matches, you know, and so like to to make the match different than what they've already seen before, it's a ladder match now, and the ladder also adds a sense of uh fairness and evenness because you know it's something like oh the 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 briefcase with the custody papers is held at a controlled height you know it's not going to be taller than uh, or well i mean it, it's held at a height that both men have to reach 
and they both have to use ladders and that's kind of like a what's the word I'm looking for um the ladder is like uh I I can't think of the the phrase but the ladder basically helps out Rey Mysterio cuz even though he's shorter you know he has a weapon to use but it's also fair to Eddie cuz he can use them too you know right but so like that that's kind of like the little explanation is that like because it's a stipulation match it means like if size is such a disadvantage to Ray, it's no disqualification anyway. He can use whatever weapons he wants, you know, tables, ladders, kendo sticks, chairs, whatever he needs to, even the odds, he has that there, you know. And um, the ladder match itself, you know, it's it's actually, uh, it's pretty funny because of the fact that, uh, you know, they have this ladder match, they have the different spots in it. But there is a part where um, Eddie Guerrero's wife, Vicky, was supposed to come out and interfere. And uh, she missed her cue. So um, they had to, like, come up with something on the spot. And uh, it's funny because you actually hear Eddie Guerrero in that match get, like, angry and yell, you know, where where the heck was she at? So that was, like, a pretty funny spot of the matches that she misses out. But... uh in the actual match, Dominic actually gets into the ring and prevents Eddie from climbing the ladder. Um, and so Eddie gets mad and he wants, and it's funny, he wants a hug even though he's mad. And when he doesn't get it, he was actually going to hit the child until Rey Mysterio interferes and beats him up. And uh, Ray is able to pull him down and, you know, win the match and win custody of his child but um you know that i think that's just the whole crazy part again like it it can't be stressed enough how crazy it is that custody papers were hung above a ring and you know it's always just so funny to see people bring it up because as i showed um geo and dom when they asked what was this when they saw it on the list it's just so funny to see the graphic of two men and then a child in the middle and it says custody of Dominic uh, ladder match. I think it's really funny to think that um, Eddie Guerrero lost, right? Mm-hmm. Or he, he's going to go down as history as the first man to lose custody of a child in a wrestling match. <laughs> and that's hilarious to me. Yeah. Dude, it's so funny because, like, uh, I I don't know what other way to put this, but, like, it, it he's going to be the only man, I'm pretty sure, because, like, it's one of those things of I don't think this is a storyline you can run in today's climate. Like, that's something, like, I think about with, like, a, it, it's especially something that you look back at a, a lot of old wrestling stuff, especially from the 90s to mid-2000s. You're just like, man, they could not get away with a lot of this stuff that they got away with. And this is one of them, like... I, I, like, they might do it again if they want to break into the mainstream again and get, like, mainstream appeal in the sense of, like, you're going to see the news people covering this and obviously talking about, like, oh, how is this allowed, you know, to cover such a serious topic in a comedic way? Like, but that would get more eyes on the on the prod- product because, like, I don't know. What do you guys think? If you if you were to hear about a match like this happening today, would it be something you'd go out of your way to seek, like, happening? Definitely. A hundred percent. Imagine you're on Twitter and then you just see the promo. <laughs> Custody match, WWE, on Sunday night or whatever. Yeah. I would definitely come out of my way. Like, that's a way to sell a match, you know? It's like, you, like, like you see that all over social media. Yeah, they're fighting for the custody of a child in a ladder match. Like, could you imagine if, uh, if like, some celebrities did that? You know, like a boxing match and whoever wins gets custody of the children. It's like, it would be crazy to see that. So, yeah, I think it would be something that, like, I don't think we'd ever see it again. So, Eddie's the only man who's ever lost the custody of a child in a wrestling match. But it would be a fun way to to get your name out there like people are definitely going to be talking about it and tuning in to see it again because mm-hmm. nowhere else are you going to get entertainment like that yeah like not even in a movie would you see this type of thing like you see those movies yeah. always about the cousin of a child it's like you know it's it's something like stupid but like this is even more stupid but in like a comedic way of like 
you, you, this is you're not gonna see this anywhere else, and that's what's so kind of like Bollywood movies. Yeah, with it's... shifting horses and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you're not seeing that anywhere else. Oh man, but um, I think the other thing too that's just so funny is that um. You know, just the whole character of Eddie, I always, I love Eddie, he's one of, I think he is probably my favorite wrestler of all time, but, like, the funniest thing is that, you know, just how petty he is throughout this feud is, like, he lost that match, and so he was like, oh, I guess I can't tell the secret I was gonna tell, except I am gonna tell it, because I'm a, I'm a cheater, I'm a liar, or whatever, you know, and, like, he still exposes this secret, and it's just so funny, because, uh, this happened back in 2005, how old was, uh... Dominic Mysterio, I think he was only like, I don't want to say six, but I don't think that's true. Hold on. Dominic Mysterio right now is 25. That was, how long ago? Was that 17 years ago? Hold on. 2005 minus nine. Oh, he might have been a bit it's older, seen. I think. He was eight years old in 2005 mm. when this match was happening. Now, he probably understands the business that his dad is in, but could you imagine being eight years old and being told, one, that the dad you have isn't the dad you thought he was like he, you know he's not your actual dad and then two yeah we're gonna be fighting for who who gets you in a ladder match imagine I think it's kind of like when parents want to hide the fact that they're adopted and uh-huh. they like accidentally find out through like had like a family reunion but this is like on a whole new level because Millions of people were being told at the sa- at the same time as you, and then every time, like when you see him on the street, and like the people that know, are always going to see him in that light. Yeah, and the the craziest thing too. Imagine being told that news. Like how you're saying, like millions of people find out too. Being told that in an arena full of people, and you're like in the center of the ring being told this. I think that's like the funniest part is that this kid is just constantly like right there. You know, just like his personal business, despite being so young, is being aired out for the whole world and everyone in the audience to hear. Well, what do you think, Tom? <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> well, it's 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 too much to handle. I'll be honest. Uh, was the kid ever like interviewed like right afterwards, or like did he ever give his own thoughts of what? It, did, did he even understand what was going on in the first place? Because I feel like this is too much for a kid to handle, like like realistically, like he might have actually thought. I mean, obviously they would have talked about this beforehand with the kid, but I just I feel like he might have thought this might have been realistic. Like he didn't know who his actual father was, so he was like. Trying to, I guess, battle the idea of if it was Rey Mysterio or not, and just oh man. Yeah, so, I, what was he? Was he ever like, um, like interviewed afterwards or, or something? I'm trying to think. I don't know if they ever interviewed like him as a kid, but you know, obviously in the storyline, he showed favor to Rey because that was like his father that he spent the most time with in storyline, you know, perspective. Uh huh. But um. So, as I mentioned, he's 25 now, and um, the crazy part is, that's probably going to be like, or maybe you guys won't find it too crazy, but um, he's an actual wrestler now in the WWE, wrestling alongside his father, Ray. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, so he wrestles, and they actually became tag team champions, so they were the the first, at least in like WWE, I think, to be like a father-son tag team champion, you know? So he's wrestling, and uh, it's just so funny because uh, I'm pretty sure like they they actually had like a watch along of the match. Like WWE had them both watch the match um, with uh, of Ray versus Eddie for the custody of him. They actually had a like a watch along like that, and he probably gave a lot of his thoughts on what he was going what it was going through his mind as a child. But like mm-hmm. uh, the funniest thing to me is that you know. Like I told you, in storyline, in the WWE, it was basically, uh, obviously, like, the the storyline wasn't real, of course, but, like, you know, it wasn't true that, like, Eddie was his father, but in WWE, it was, like, official that, like, it was true, it was proven that Eddie was his actual father, 
when he made his debut in the WWE to wrestle, they just completely retconned that. They completely ignored the fact that they themselves were the ones that were like, oh yeah, Eddie's his actual father. They completely ignored it. And it's funny because they brought up the ladder match at SummerSlam, uh, like the, that match, and uh, they just completely ignored, again, they completely ignored their own storyline and were like, no, no he, he was never his real father, Ray's his real father. And like, I just find that so funny that they went through all that effort and then they retconned part of the storyline being that, you know, they actually no, not part of it. They they retconned the whole reason that feud happened, which was that Eddie was his actual father, and it, they just completely ignored that now. He's. They have mm-hmm. no content. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Just about like the WWE as a whole. Who comes up with these storylines, dude? <laughs> because I think, like in recent months on tiktok and stuff there's just like a bunch of we things wwe post and how controversial they were like you could never do that now uh-huh. and what was what would because it's such a unique story but at the same time who would think of something like that like they're in a meeting and they're like Okay, we need to figure out our next storyline. And then someone goes, what about they fight for the, um, they fight for the custody of this, of their child. And then someone's like, you know what? That's a good idea. That's the most, that's like the interesting part to me. Yeah, WWE's creative is a very interesting group. So, obviously at the time, the head of like all decisions and has to give the A-OK is Vince McMahon and then there's like a group of um, writers that like kind of have to come up with ideas and pitch the ideas to Vince McMahon himself sometimes the wrestlers will pitch ideas to creative they work on it and then they pitch it to Vince McMahon you know and uh, I want to know the same thing I wonder if there's anything out there that like gives confirmation of like who booked the storyline. I I it was probably Eddie and Ray together cuz like you know, I I doubt it that some random writer in the creative room pitched that idea cuz you know, you need the AOK of both men to do it. So, I feel like both men went through with the idea, like they pitched it themselves. But at the same time, that's just so crazy to think because, you know, like the two obviously knew each other in real life and were best friends. So, like, you just imagine two of them sitting in the locker room like, man, what, what can we do to make our feud that we have going on more interesting? And one of them just goes, like how you're staying with the creative room, but like this time it's just two best friends. What if we fought for the custody of your child in a ladder match? And like, you know, we come up with this whole storyline where I'm actually his father. Like the fact that both men <laughs> go along with it, too. It's like it's one of those moments where they're like they're like in the living room and then little Dominic is just playing by himself and then they're talking and then like both of them simultaneously look at the kid at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what if we fought for the custody of this child right here? You think that would make compelling TV? And like just imagine pitching that idea or imagine being Vince McMahon and hearing that idea pitched you. Just like, hey boss, um, you know how we're very sports entertainment based. We have all these crazy storylines. What if the two of us fought for his child right here? You know, we fought for his custody where the storyline is I'm his actual father. And to make it to make it even more dramatic and intense, it's going to be in a ladder match where the actual custody papers are hung above the ring and we have to climb a ladder to get them. It, it, it is such a crazy storyline to look back at like in hindsight and retrospective like just like basically what we've been kind of saying this entire time it's crazy to think that such a crazy idea was allowed to go through with and like it i think the crazy part i mean it's obviously it's not really to be expected because obviously kids have their own passions and dreams but you see that a lot where the kids of an athlete want to go into the same thing their parents did it's so crazy to think that years later this little kid that we saw in that um in this match and in this whole feud he would show up years later down the line to wrestle with his father 
And that's like one of those like you love to see it moments. Yeah, it, it, it was such a crazy experience. Like two seeds. Like I mean, he's been wrestling for two years now under the WWE, <laughs> and it's just like so crazy to think that like this kid that we saw who had bleach blonde hair is now here wrestling with his father, and it's just kind of crazy to think about that. Like, like this is the first time we ever saw him, and here he is now on our screens actually wrestling. Do Do you guys know that one meme? Um, it's, it's like you see it a lot on TikTok. The it's like Leonardo DiCaprio. And he's like watching television or something, and he starts point, pointing violently at the at the TV. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, just the mad like that was literally everyone who recognized the kid from way back. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, the big issue though is that that people have had is that uh, when he debuted, they were kind of mad he didn't wear a mask like his father, because you know, there's obviously storylines you could do with masks, but. It's so crazy to think, like, the moment... Because, like, he appeared a couple of times in... Uh, but, like, not in actual matches, but, like, to help out his father. And, like, that's when you learn, like, oh, yeah, he's been training. He's likely going to make his uh, debut soon. And it's just, like... I don't know. It's so crazy. Like, it's one of those things that kind of, like, almost in a sense... uh Makes people feel old to think that they were like, oh, I remember seeing this kid, you know... <laughs> I remember seeing this kid having his custody fought over in the ladder match, and now here he is on our screen, an actual wrestler. Man. And it's funny, because I think his debut match was at SummerSlam, so, like, you know, obviously his name is always tied to that pay-per-view of SummerSlam. But I don't, I, I don't know, like, what, what rating would you have given this? Like, seeing this all go down. Like, would you have been invested week to week? Or would it have just been, like, something that, like, oh, that's an interesting thing. I'll maybe, like, catch the actual match when it happens. But, like, you don't get all the details, you know, by tuning in week to week. I think it would have been, like, like, I see the, like, the whole storyline starts. And then maybe I just miss a few parts in between. But then I definitely watch, like, the actual match. Of it happening. What about you, Doug? Yeah, I, I would definitely want. I would want to keep watching. I don't want to. I don't. I wouldn't want to miss anything. Like every single. I'm pretty sure every single detail is going to be like properly implemented so that the story can like be interesting. Uh, what rating I would give it? Uh, I mean, just based off the promos, like a like a solid like nine out of ten because like as. The story can be simple. It's just simply put the custody fight for a child. That in it of itself is very interesting. Because I don't, I don't think I've ever heard this. Like, like, I think I, I, like the, the 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 idea itself is just very just out there. It's very outlandish. I would I would have given it a high rating too, just because of how unique the idea is. And just how, like, absurd it is. Because, like, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Yeah, and that's always just, like, the funny thing to me. Or, not not really funny, how would I put this? Like, I think that's the one thing that's always, like, kept my interest in wrestling. Is that it's the one sort of medium that can tell a ton of stories that traditional forms of media wouldn't tell or like take the risk of telling you know like you wouldn't mm-hmm. see this whole storyline of a of again a, a kid fighting having his custody fought over by the two parents in a ladder or not the two parents but the two dad in a ladder match and they've done like a ton of like crazy storylines too that have just like it's just so odd to think about like i mean there's the whole story of like the Undertaker, his character as a whole, being this, like, undead guy. Like, that's something that, like, you truly have to, like, put a lot of effort into to make people not only just believe, but, like, get interested in. Because, you know, it's one of those things, of course, people already know that uh, a lot of it is scripted. But to get, like, I think that's the place I applaud them the most is still being able to get people intrigued and um, immersed into the product despite, you know... 
like having to fight that uphill battle of people knowing that it's not real in the sense of like um you know it's scripted fighting the outcomes are determined predetermined and all that you know that's the thing that i don't really understand when people say oh but it's scripted and that's like their main reason not to watch but when you think about it what isn't scripted and nowadays like outside of like actual sports and you know combat fighting like everything else is scripted any movies tv shows youtube videos even prank videos literally everything is scripted so once like they should really just get past that because if you look at the content i've watched it before and as a little kid like nothing made me happier than turning on wwe and seeing grown ass men <laughs> fling each other across the canvas because it's good entertainment like where else are you gonna see this like i remember when like the undertaker was one of my favorites because i don't know his whole concept is cool and like when he did so, like the same with his eyes and like he like picked someone up what was it called tombstone yeah so when he did that to someone i was like oh jesus christ and like with randy orton with the rko and all of that stuff it's just it, it's really entertaining so people should just get really get past it because to me it's not really like a valid excuse or reason to what's the word um, like be disinterested or, like i i get what you're saying because uh that's my main thing too is just like it's an outdated form of uh criticism i guess you could call it because like how you're saying you know like what isn't scripted these days and even people have their theories that stuff like combat sports and or regular sports like football and basketball are scripted in their own ways you know mm-hmm. i mean literally we just had in the nfl like uh, one of the owners punished because it was like it was uh found out that he was trying to pay off his coach to lose more games so that they can get better draft picks and like that's scripted in itself that you know these losses were going to be predetermined because they wanted to lose as much as they can we see we've heard about that in the nba it's an issue in the nba where teams yeah i mean not just tanking, but, like, if you look at, like, a player like Russell Westbrook, you cannot tell me that's not, like, a scripted character. Because <laughs> how, how does he go from having, like, triple-double, triple-doubles? Triple-doubles? What's yeah. it called? Yeah, triple-doubles. Why does that sound so weird to me? I don't know. <laughs> triple-doubles and, like, literally stat-packing pack, entire seasons at OKC to not being able to shoot a basketball bro like to me he's a scripted character (laughs) he was paid off by the mafia to tank lebron's season this year but yeah it's like i i I don't know maybe it's because i've been like a wrestling fan for such long even though it's been on and off because at times the product wasn't as interesting you know but like it's such an outdated argument to me because it's just like how you're saying like yeah you people go watch all these different movies they'll watch these series they'll watch reality television like keeping up with the kardashians <laughs> but will complain that, mm-hmm. that they can't watch WWE because it's scripted and it's fake as i've shown dom through certain wrestling matches the stuff in ring is not fake that is real pain that they go through that is real hits kicks strikes that they take to their face to their chest to their legs you know that stuff is real. Obviously, the storylines, the characters and all that, yeah, they're scripted, they're predetermined. But, like, again, it's it's a form of media that you're not going to get anywhere else. They're, you're going to see stories told in ways that you would never see anywhere else, you know? Like, I don't I don't know. It's like you... you it's so interesting because it's like you get to see the way certain characters develop. And, like, the biggest thing, too, and I guess maybe it's something that maybe would be like a a sort of like a not what was the word maybe it would be um something that wouldn't keep them as interested it's like it's like a year round thing like they're the WWE never takes a break they're always on TV weekly and all that you know they never take a break there have been times where there was a snowstorm and they couldn't have um like they the the arena 
what was it? Hold on, sorry. There was like a big snowstorm, so they couldn't be at the arena. Fans couldn't even be at the arena and all that, you know. And they still went through with the show by having um, the talent being interviewed and then playing um, old matches, you know, like doing like replays of old matches. So that's like, that's all the show was, was just old matches being played through and inter- talent being interviewed and, you know, continuing their storylines through interviews. And it's just like, they, they, they're they constant. It's constant content for you as a fan to watch. And for some people that may be overbearing to never get a break. You know, like how like the NBA or NFL, you know, sports like that get breaks, you know, but like at the same time, it's like it's you're constantly seeing how certain uh, wrestlers are being, you know, how their stories are developing, how the feuds and storylines are developing. And again, you're just going to see stuff that you wouldn't see anywhere else. You brought up Randy Orton earlier. There was a feud that Randy Orton was in where it involved a home invasion where Triple H broke into his house to like try and hunt him. Dude, I saw that. I saw that live. That was. Dude. That was sick. You get storylines like that that you wouldn't see. And like, the one thing I always applaud them on, you know, I I, bring, I keep bringing up that you'll never see them. And that's because they're willing to take the risk on some of these storylines that traditional medias wouldn't tell, you know. And that's another mm-hmm. thing is that like they're able to tell it because of their weekly television and because of the, the business that they're in, you know. A lot of this stuff, it like it's it's only as good because it develops over the weeks where it's like. You know, a movie or even like a regular TV show wouldn't be able to tell those type of stories because, you know, they're they have a set time that they got to focus on. You know, like certain TV episodes are only like 30 minutes. Meanwhile, WWE has a three hour show every week that they can tell these storylines over, you know. And is it really three hours? Yeah, Raw is three hours and SmackDown is two hours. So that's five hours a week that they get to tell their story Yikes. over. It is a definitely a downfall in that sense because three hours is too much to sit through for wrestling fans. Like not only just wrestling fans, but the wrestlers themselves. Because like, and the writers themselves. Because that's three hours of content just for that one show. Because then the other show's two hours. Five hours of content that they got to come up with every single week. That's five hours of matches, storylines that they have to come up with. It's it's honestly very difficult on their part to like have to come up with interesting stuff every week to continue and uh, keeping fans engaged, which is why so many fans have called for like them to shorten the, the amount of shows or showtime. I mean, mm-hmm. they really have like all the time in the world to properly develop a story compared to TV shows. Yeah, I mean, Cause I, even if it's like. The whole season to develop a story, you're still limited to like eight episodes. Yeah, I mean that's a big issue we've seen with uh, Marvel right now is their Disney Plus series. People feel like it they aren't long enough to fully develop a character and a storyline. Mm-hmm. And there's a ton of uh, th- there's a ton of stories that I can't wait to explain to the two of you. But those will have to be for future episodes. But you know. With that being said, um, I know I asked you guys earlier, but final ratings for this storyline? Mm, nine out of ten. Yeah, nine out of ten. Mm. And with that being said, I've been your host, Jack, joined by my fellow co-hosts. Dominic Steele. Gio. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of Season 3 of the Rule 34 Podcast. We will see you all Thursday for a review of Parasite, correct? The movie Parasite. Mm-hmm. Big yes. critical hit. Um, Wait, were we going to do Prey? Uh, we'll see what we decide. I'm pretty sure Parasite's pencil in, but we'll see if we change it up. But uh, that being said, thank you all for joining us for another episode. And as always, if it exists, we have an opinion on it. Thank you, and we'll catch you on the next episode. That's so. That's so. That's so. That's so. That's so. That's so.